Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two for this news report today, Wednesday, November 14th, 2012. I'm Darko. This is my website, ggnonline.com, and on YouTube it's ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. This poll up here, you can check out what issue is important to you right now. The majority of the people are saying spirituality, so it's changing. Uh, and the second place is tied between the economy and General Petraeus' affair and the Libya cover-up. So we were just talking about the uh, United Nations wants to control of web through a kill switch, you know. And uh, one of the things is the six strikes and you're out for copyright infringement, but they talk about temporarily reductions of Internet speeds. It's just interesting because I think <laughs> whether you uh, infringe on copyrights uh, through downloads and stuff like that is irrelevant. Uh, if, if they don't like what you're saying, they could temporarily reduce your Internet speed, mess with your connection basically the issues that I've been going through, and I don't even have a major ISP. Uh, did Skype give a private company data on teen WikiLeaks supporter without a warrant? So Skype was kind of busted before about uh, privacy and, and turning over conversations to the police and authorities. So Skype's privacy credentials took a hit in July over a refusal to comment on whether it could eavesdrop on conversations, but now uh, Skype is facing another privacy-related backlash after allegedly handing over user data without a warrant to a private security firm investigating pro-WikiLeaks activists. Like I said, I'm going to be moving fast, so just stick with me here. i got a lot to cover uh, today. U.S. to scan status updates and tweets for bioterrorism evidence. U.S. Department of Homeland Security has commissioned a one-year contract to investigate the efficacy of using social networks to identify instances of bioterrorism pandemics and other health and security risk. It's paying uh, this Accenture Federal Services $3 million to scan the networks for keywords in real time to see if growing threats or health trends can be dis uh, distinguished. So if an individual flags up a nasty cough in a Facebook update, for instance, software will be looking to see if medical terminology is repeated in connected groups on or from individuals posting from the same location. So it sounds like a good thing, but it's really just making sure that everything is going uh, according to plan. Mobile data mapping has been used in the past to track prediction population movements following natural disasters, right? They've also been using it against activists at Occupy uh, movements. That's coming straight from the police's mouth. So, um, also, moving on here, we have uh, DARPA sponsor surveillance technology to predict future behavior. At the New American, we've chronicled various projects sponsored by the Uber Secret Research and Development Arm of the Military. One of the newest technologies will not only widen the field of vision of government's never bl blinking eye, but purports to predict the behavior of those being watched. Yeah, I mean, they, they want predictable slaves. That's the thing. But uh, Forbes actually reported on it. A system to develop an artificial intelligence system that can watch and predict what a person will likely do in the future using specially programmed software designed to analyze various real-time video surveillance feeds. The system can automatically identify and notify officials if it recognized that an action is not permitted uh, detecting what is described as anomalous behaviors. So, you know, we're all criminals and there's so many laws on the books and uh, we're getting into pre-crime now. If you eat something, say something. DHS sounds the alarm on terrorist implication of food trucks. So it goes on and says that various government agencies see possible terrorists everywhere but rarely ever catch one. And despite the large number of personnel being thrown at the problem along, along with lots of money, actual terrorists seem to be in limited supply. But these agencies haven't let their lack of success temper their vision of a nation under constant imminent attack. It goes on here and uh, recently posted, Public Intelligence recently posted, a PowerPoint presentation from the NYC Fire Department discussing the unique safety issues mobile food trucks present. So actual concerns about propane and gasoline power generators. It says the presenter decided to toss in some DHS speculation on yet another way terrorists might be killing us in the near future. So it says instead of serving up a quick hot meal, these food trucks will be serving up death and lots of it under the heading terrorist implications. The FDNY lists the exact reasons we should be concerned, most of which begins with the word high. And it's interesting because I saw this uh, article in Chicago, too. I don't know why there's this big war on these little trucks. Um, but it says a new lawsuit claims Chicago food truck ordinance violates constitution. So it says that three food truck operators in Chi-Town have been listed as the plaintiffs in a lawsuit that challenges the city's food truck ordinance. The lawsuit was filed 
on behalf of three individuals accusing the city of discriminatory practices and a newly approved ordinance limitations of food trucks. They say here that the ordinance states that food trucks must be parked at least 200 feet away from the brick and mortar locations. Those who violate this can be given a $2,000 uh, fine. Argue it protects the brick and mortar restaurants from competing with food trucks. They also want to require food trucks to install GPS devices on board so they can track whether a food truck parks within 200 feet of a restaurant. Then this article I found is uh, like one of many. Michigan man dies at polls, comes back to life to vote. Now I'm sure you remember this. Uh, you know he was <laughs> that important that he that he would vote that he came back alive and he said, D you know, am I too late? Can I still vote? Uh, wife runs husband over during political argument. It says a man was in critical condition and his wife under arrest after she allegedly ran him over with the family SUV on Saturday night during an argument over the presidential election. Now, it's sad that people actually believe in the system that much that they would do something like that. It shows the amount of programming embedded. But uh, remember, right after the elections, they put up uh, all these articles before and after the elections about how polarized America is and, you know, how Americans are in relationships and marriage, married couples are, one's a conservative, the other's a liberal, and how they live cozy and they have these cute little arguments. Well, this isn't a cute little argument. And um, so this is this is like kind of an indicator of what I was talking about, about people are, get, are coming, uh, basically getting on edge now. Um, it's getting a little crazy now as far as people not feeling like they have any power over their lives. Um, or their fate or their future. Then I saw this article, Florida man commits suicide over Obama's re-election. So it says, is this becoming a trend? A Key West man told his partner that if Barack Obama gets re-elected, I'm not going to be around, was found dead on November 8th with the words F. Obama scrawled on his will and two empty prescription bottles nearby. He's lucky he didn't get a, a visit by the Secret Service, but I guess he would have been dead already. So, But who knows? Like I said before, they... They could have just took his dead body and thrown it in the, in the jail cell or tortured it and interrogated it or something. I didn't know about this. I just clicked on the link. Virginia man kills himself and his family over fear of Obama's re-election from October 1st. A wealthy defense contractor and devout Christian from suburban Washington, D.C. fatally shot his wife, children, and himself over fears of Obama winning the second term. So, and you know, and you know that's what I said. This media, man, is owned by Zionists and globalists. They think it's a big joke when they put these articles out there. You know, this is not a joke, engineering society. 22 signs that voter fraud is widely out of control and the election was a sham. You go in there and check them out. I'm going to keep moving. I'll go through a couple of them. According to the uh, Election Protection Coalition, voters across the U.S. reported more than 70,000 voting problems. There were 59 voting divisions in Philadelphia where Mitt Romney did not receive a single vote. In those voting divisions, the combined vote totaled 19,000 for Obama and zero for Romney. The overall turnout rate in Philadelphia was, not, was only about 60%. But it goes on and says Republican poll watchers were illegally removed. The voter turnout rate was over 90%. Obama received over 99% of the vote. Uh, Romney won 55 out of 67 counties in the state of Pennsylvania and still managed to lose the entire state by a wide margin because of the absurd vote totals that Obama ran up in the urban areas. Obama received more than 98% of the vote in 10 of the 50 wards of the city of Chicago. And it says here, prior to the election, voters of Nevada, North Carolina, Texas, and Ohio all reported voting, voting machines were switching their votes for Romney over to Obama. Not just Ohio, but in other places I uh, read about that uh, they would show up to the polls on election day were surprised that they were informed that they had already voted. So after the elections, you haven't really seen Obama over in the Northeast at all. You think he'd at least do it for public relations uh, uh, purposes, you know, but you haven't. And he's actually, this Saturday... He's going to be heading out to Asia, you know, for the whole economic uh, Asia pivot, as they're calling it. But he's going to be in Burma, in Myanmar, and, that, and uh, he's going to totally disregard what's going on with the um, genocide against the Muslim minorities there. Um, you know, and, and meanwhile, in his own country, is uh, you know, it's getting pretty bad right now. You know, I'm sure they would understand if you said, you know what, I think I should just stay in the country and uh, I'm going to go over to the North, uh, New England area and help those people out. Thousands on Long Island still without power after two weeks. It goes on there and it says that uh, I, I tell them, get off your rear end and do your job, the 68-year-old Seaford resident said. Well, she would if she could get in touch with anyone. Over the last two weeks since they lost power, 
of uh, the Superstorm Sandy, she said, every time I call, they hung up on me. So there's still many people in the dark. Then Christie warns New Jersey residents of post-storm tax hikes. New Jersey residents already pay the highest property taxes in the country, averaging $7,700 per household. So the governor is saying that uh, residents are going to see higher local property taxes to help pay for rebuilding. Obama demand $1.6 trillion in tax hikes over the next 10 years, double previously than expected. Gosana says, we know what a truly balanced approach to our fiscal challenges looks like, said Mr. Carney, using Democrats' language to mean spending cuts combined with tax increases. Foxconn sees new source of cheap labor, the United States. So, you know, I said this a couple of years ago that eventually they'd come back manufacturing the U.S. and uh, and basically they get a basically the most desperate people ever, a generation of Americans to, to bend over backwards for them. And uh, remember, Foxconn is the company where people are, uh, they had to put up little nets on top of the building because people were jumping off, committing suicide over the conditions. The company is reportedly evaluating cities such as Detroit and Los Angeles. I think in Detroit, the China has a big, they call it Little China or something like that. Louisiana voters choose gun rights. So they voted uh, overwhelmingly for Proposition 2, an amendment to their state's constitution that solidifies the Second Amendment in the state of Louisiana. They're also the top, uh, I think they were the third country, uh, third state that wanted to secede besides Texas. So state legislators in Rhode Island and Maine are announcing marijuana legalization bills tomorrow. They'll announce tomorrow to legalize recreational marijuana. Spokesperson uh, for the policy project announced it goes on here and it says that uh, similar proposals will be submitted in at least two other states, Vermont and Massachusetts. Then Maine and Maryland approve gay marriage. Minnesota rejects the ban and Washington State too close to call. So this is, of course, November 7th, but Maine and Maryland approve gay marriage. Then petitions call for states to succeed, leading petition from Texas. So it goes on here and it says the leading petition by far comes from Texas, which by midnight had reached 59,000 electronic signatures says the U.S. continues to suffer economic difficulties stemming from the federal government's neglect to reform domestic and foreign spending, reads the petition. It also goes on and it says that given that the state of Texas maintains a balanced budget and is the 15th largest economy in the world, it is practically feasible for Texans to withdraw from the union and to do so would protect its citizens' standard of living and resecure their rights and liberties in accordance with the original ideas and beliefs of our founding fathers which are no longer being reflected by the federal government. The Obama regime, according to terms officially laid out by the White House, is required to respond to the petition in a timely fashion because it topped 25,000 signatures well in advance of the December 9th uh, deadline. News we cover, GOP, you're old, you're white, you're history. So I've been seeing a lot of these types of artic articles out there um, saying this is a huge triumph uh, for liberals and the, and the left. And in two more months, we won't have to worry about this failed leftist magazine news week print uh, edition will join other failed outdated periodicals in the trash heap of history so good riddance about the obama conquest lucky general or master of the game now we're segueing into uh, american culture and we'll really get into this in the next video uh, but i'll leave off with this article now eu seeks to ban the family so brussels takes aim at the famous five uh, books portraying traditional families could be barred. Books that reinforce traditional roles can contribute to gender stereotyping. A report says traditional stories can damage women's career opportunities. Reports uh, authors say books which portray traditional images of mothers caring for their children or fathers going out to work could be barred from schools under proposals from Brussels. An AU or an EU report, sorry, claims that gender stereotyping in schools influences the perception of the way boys and girls should behave and damages women's career opportunities in the future. Of course, this is the false feminism uh, that the globalist eugenicists, social, uh, social engineering, uh, like to push. Critics said that the proposals for the study materials to be amended so that men and women are no longer depicted in their traditional roles would mean that uh, the withdrawal of children's classics, such as the famous five series, uh, Paddington Bear of Peter Pan. So the dominant social theme is people need to let other people alone, even if Leviathan itself must be employed to make it happen. So it says here it's got to be the most incredible idea yet to legislate per, uh, portrayals of the family out of existence. They're not just announcing their intentions to attack the family unit, 
but to ban by force any mention of it. Please join me in part three. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.